Supreme Mayor Baba has come from India with a message to the West. He does not convey this message by speaking, but by his mere presence. When he wishes to communicate with people, he uses this board and points to the uh, letters on it. My object in coming to the West is not with the intention of establishing new creeds or spiritual societies. I see the structure of all the great religions of the world tottering. I intend to bring together all religions and cults like beads on one stream and revitalize them for individual and collective needs. This is my mission to the West. I was asked by Mayor Baba to visit anonymously an assembly of some of the greatest religious spots in veneration in India. I thought he was giving me a cook's tour of India, but I became tremendously impressed by, first of all, the beauty of these places and the tremendous strength uh, of the presence of truth. I rather rapidly had a, a wish that I could introduce some of my close friends uh, to this beautiful selection that was made. For myself, I've always wanted to travel in India and to see places that Baba visited. Then when Don said he was doing this pilgrimage, I knew that it was my chance and I better take it. This trip is a kind of reconciliation with other religions that I don't have any idea. So I did a certain amount of arm twisting and some 50 odd persons, most of them people that I've known for a long time, very close personal friends, people from totally different backgrounds, from different religions, different mysticisms or agnostics, uh, say, uh, would would like to come in and join into the trip. Mr. Gilo is negotiating about getting some porters or truck to do that, so we're just waiting for that to happen. Very useful to have somebody who speaks Hindi. We are collected together on a very specific project to see if we can influence religious dissension, which has been so characteristic for centuries. We are drawn together by the conviction that truth is unitary, and it is the same truth for all religions, all faiths, all mysticisms. That is the organizing principle on which we unconsciously work. Shall I speak to, in general, what we're doing, or specifically? 
specifically what we'll do, we will collect as a group, um, and then we will repeat the name of God. We'll repeat the name of God. Hello, Catherine. Hi. J. Baba. J. Baba. This is Catherine. Yeah, they know me already. J. Baba. I'm, I'm doing some photojournalism of my own. Yeah. Mostly of the enormous amount of trash, uh, which I find to be really astonishing. So we'll uh, we'll collect as a group at the tomb, some some spot or other, um, which hasn't been predetermined. That's what we're still working out as we go to each different site, and we'll. Uh, will then uh, repeat the name of God, particular, to the religion um, for five minutes. Uh, we did this once before already, and then we observed uh, two minutes of silence. And then we got lunch. Not enough trash. No. Well, of course, it is unusual for 50 people to get together in this sort of a project. And I would say that a tradition is a truth, and I think that everything that is truth is part of the nature of God. And so there are so many ways I think that we can participate uh, in Godhood, and uh, some of them rather unexpected. This, this place is, is the holiest site, uh, and I think it's important for people to, um, to visit some of these places. Quickly. It was chaotic inside. Um, there were people who were bringing um, flowers uh, as offerings, and, the flowers were just grabbed and, and dumped on a casket. And then, you know, basically the people were kind of shoved along. Vraiment, j'ai subi une, une impression très forte en venant dans ce tombeau-là. C'était quelque chose de, de spécial, presque de, de féerique, on va dire. Presque de surnaturel, voilà. J'étais comme euh, subjugué, je suis rentré dans le tombeau, j'avais les yeux grands ouverts. C'était comme si j'étais dans un rêve, un rêve éveillé. Descendant of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he came to India in 1192 AD, and before him also there were so many Sufis came to India to propagate Islam through the medium of Sufism, and we pray to Allah Taala that through the blessings of Khaja Muhammad Nasir Chishti, may Almighty bless you and bring peace on the earth. Islamic religion, you can't be a god. You are a human being, you have a one life, and then you will be judged with your sins and with your goods. That's all. But in Sufism, your aim is to be one with God, sooner or later. So the shortest way to reach the state of 
being is to love God and live life loving everything around you. Sufism main essence is love and peace. And we must stop hatred, the Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Basically, they teach all the things, whether it's Torah, Bible, or Quran, the gist is the same. And you call it Almighty God, we call it Allah, someone calls it Israel. But the main road is to love thy creation. Love thy creation is the bottom line. Um, this is our time to repeat God's name. And the form that we will use is Allah. I need one person to keep track of the time. Okay. Before the pilgrimage, I had some apprehension. Most of us are from the West going into these holy places of a completely different tradition and presuming to repeat the name of God associated with their tradition, I thought, oh, that could just seem so presumptuous. Sometimes I feel a bit nervous being at the sites because I feel as someone who's not necessarily part of that religion or, or, or spiritual tradition, um, sometimes I feel like a bit awkward because I feel like we're, we're coming in and we might say something to cause offense or something. How unusual was it for some of these onlookers to say, who are these crazy Westerners, you know? What do they think they're doing? What I hadn't really understood was when that is done from the heart, as it's been done, and when, in our case, 49 hearts are repeating the name of God associated with that tradition with the utmost sincerity and respect for what we understand that to be, there's a transcendent moment that's created. The floor almost was rolling for me as we repeated Allah. What I'm learning about these other traditions, it's not just um, the intellectual learning about the details of the religion or anything like that. It's being connected for example, with something that goes back hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, and that um, is very, very deep within a culture that I know nothing about, but I'm connected to in our shared love for God, our shared spiritual seeking, which a person does, can do from any tradition. the base of the various tennis beliefs, idioms, dogmas, rituals, are based on things that are identical. And so unity simply means that the origins are from an identical source. The most serious problem has been the contravention of every single baggage allowance rule on every single airline that's, that ev has ever crossed Atlantic Pacifics the world. We are carrying baggage that you would not believe the kilo weight of. <laughs> <laughs> Bon, je comprends très bien que les femmes aient envie d'avoir de, des nouvelles tenues et tout. Bon, OK. C'est un pèlerinage. On ne va pas aller dans des soirées, euh, <laughs> des soirées chic ou on ne va pas aller à des cocktails. Bon. Euh. All the women, we all had too much luggage because we're women. 
and so we needed a lot of help. You know, there was there was some discord, there was some opposition, there was tension, there was friction. This means that nobody can actually pick up their own bags, <laughs> which subsequently means that at every railway station we have to hire porters who are very, very eager. The porters bring trolleys, which look as though they're going to collapse at any minute. These excessively weighted bags are put on the trolleys and then disappear, at which point almost everybody becomes completely panic-stricken. And it's a miracle that we all end up in the same place, more or less at the same time, to catch the bus. I think baggage is a real problem. arrogant thinking oh I'm an open-minded guy and stuff and then was absolutely shell-shocked <laughs> you know terrified moi je suis perdu comme plein de jeunes qui sont comme moi perdus à fonder quelque chose si je ne décide pas de changer aujourd'hui je ne changerai jamais rien out of time, it's out of space. And you can't, well, I can't get back into my mode, you know, my normal mode of functioning afterwards. I just can't. I'd like us to count one of the Western names of God. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu. truth can be interpreted so rapidly in different directions that it becomes disunified. And so you can have this religion which takes uh, the great master's truth and the other one who followed the same prophet, uh, but nevertheless his statements were interpreted in a different manner. And first thing you know you've got a major schism right within people loving the same prophet. Everybody loves their baby. Come on. My baby is the most wonderful in the world. Of course, everybody says that, and it's completely true. And everybody who's got love for their master has got that. But you can't build your life on it. I would like to share the tiny, a little bit of the tiny adventure I've had with Jainism in the past six to eight weeks. Um, I'm enthused and I'd like to share that with you as well. Jainism is the first ethical religion in the fact that they are very concerned about the respect of all life 
and they don't want even the smallest bug to be inhaled or to be stepped on. They are principally vegetarian, so much so the ascetics don't eat root vegetables because they don't want to hurt a worm or something that could possibly be attached to the root. What, as a lay person, not knowing very little of Jainism, could we do to be respectful of the Jain temple? They are, the monks in the Dilwara temples are Svetambara. Svetambara means white clad, which is why I asked everyone to bring white clothing. W one interesting point when, in relation to this journey th of compassion that we, are, that we have embarked on is that each site leader was to recite the name of God at the site. But the Jains do not recite the name of God. They do not pray to one God because they believe that man controls his destiny. They believe that God has created the universe and set it in motion and it does its thing. And they, it goes. And we are responsible for our path and improving our path and reaching the eventual perfection that we are, of which we are capable. So their prayer, their main mantra is this one. As I will repeat in our prayer section, we are going to sing this prayer. You are singing Namo Loe Sava Sahunam Padaman Havai Mangalam. Up till now, everything has been quite theistic and devotional. And, you know, you should love God, and that's the most important thing, and that kind of stuff. So if you're heavily into the personal, which will, tends to be focused upon a special form, you know, Vishnu or Shiva or Baba, it's going to be quite difficult to drop all that and go into the impersonal. Yes, Doug. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We're going to do this three times. Yes, but we haven't finished yet. Let me, let me just... All right. Sorry. I, I, I've cut out one thing to make it simpler, so let me get at least to the second part. So we are 26 men, 24 women. I would like us to arrange ourselves in rows of five, keeping in mind that discipline is a Jain virtue. And it's one question. Yes. Sorry. Are we going to count from right to left or left? Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the same way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, always in relation to the Titanka. Frankly, I will say something. When uh, dear Ken described how we should act, I said, oh no, I don't want to be a, in a ritual way. And I was, I was thinking that maybe I will not join the group at that point. A technique for bowing. Should we give that to you? Yes, it would be good. We'll do it, we'll do the best we can. Take a breath in, the right foot slides back. Breathe out. As you breathe in, you're down. Well, most of the people on this trip follow okay. Mayor Baba, who so said he had come to do away with all rituals and ceremonies. So it seems a little contradictory to me that we would perform a lot of rituals and ceremonies. Your back is already breathe in, breathe out, down, breathe in. And once you're down, breathe out. <laughs> how to kneel, how to breathe while you kneel, how to breathe while you stand up after you knelt, then you've got to do that three times. You know, it seemed superfluous to me. Breathe out. Let you go up, you breathe in. Well, I just don't see why I should be a part of it. I don't even know if that's what these people actually do. So I have no idea if the monks will burst out laughing or, you know, throw pitchforks at us. I have no idea. I was with Rob Ryder, and I, while we were standing in our kind of woggly lines trying to sing a song that we didn't know in a language we didn't understand, in an order that we couldn't understand, and I said, we have to support this man. How do we do it? He said, just tag along.
We came here, we did it, and I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a complete success from beginning to end. The whole thing was just wonderful. And the reason that it was wonderful was because of the purity of Ken's intention. And it was so beautiful that in the temple, they listened to us, and then when we finished one time, they did the Arihanta ceremony with the, fi with the fire. And then Mickey said, I think we should do it twice. Don said, do it twice. I said, oh yeah. We did it a second time. It was very cool. The Jans were completely unfussed by us, and um, it was the most delightful experience. I mean, utterly delightful and sublime, and we were welcomed. There is an understanding between human beings about the passionate worship of God in whatever form and whatever name there is. But if someone is trapped in the false belief that their way is the only way, then I think the form becomes an interference. The form is a representation of the truth. So that's why you have the ceremonies, that's why you have the statues, that's why you have the, the temples, that's why you have you know, the complexes. And they can be deeply great, there's no two ways about it. I'm not saying that that's totally worthless. I'm saying as soon as you make it the center of what you're doing, you will always have a tendency to spiritual materialism, to the accumulation of forms that will lead you to enlightenment. It doesn't work like that. Don't let's leave this in spiritual terms. It applies to all relationships and all things that really matter in human life. I must say that I'm never with a group. I mostly live by myself. And so the rubbing of people is very, very hard. Um, I try not to take, but, to take it personally, but this is what it feels like, you know, like people after me. I've never done a group trip. I'm really not a group person. I'm very, very, it's very hard for me to stay in groups, including my own family. You know, we go out together and after about half an hour, I tend to take off, they have to run and catch me. Yeah. But I've stayed with this one, I was tempted, I've been tempted to jump ship two or three times, but I managed to resist it. I feel a lot of friction, you know, and, and also the fact, the lack of sleep, you know, every time we, I have a very hard time adjusting to the fact that in India, you're, ne you're never alone, it's constant noise. Um, people talk on their cell phones all the night. They don't care if you're around sleeping. And they get up at five and start leaving as if you were not there. <laughs> so I haven't slept in, you know, a real night in days. And I think that adds to the you know, difficulty of the environment. Il y a la réalité et la spiritualité. Tu vois, et les deux sont font partie du voyage. C'était obligé que ça soit la merde. Parce que c'était la merde, il faut le dire. Et là, on a vu vraiment le, la, le vrai visage de tout le monde. Hein. C'est-à-dire les gens qui en avaient marre, les gens qui étaient agacés, les gens qui étaient jaloux, parce qu'il y en a qui avaient mieux dormi que d'autres. On a vu tout ça. Et pour moi, ça a été très marquant parce que c'était médiocre. What day is it? I don't know if we're going to have enough time. 
What time is it? What is my name? Three overnight train trips, an overnight bus trip, and then all sorts of manner of conveyances in between to get to these places. That just strips away, you know, your endurance. It strips away your resistance. I would really like for the group to get together and focus. See, we are a group. Come on, guys. We, we are diverse. We are from Turkey, from France, from England, from Ireland, from, from the US, from Mexico. But in our diversity of age, in our diversity of education, of, of, of financial capacity, of belief, we are one. That's what we are here to do, is to encourage that unity in everything that we do. It's one of the great tragedies of human existence that so many differences have come up in the course of time through the natural circumstances of the differences and the egotism of human nature. It almost seems as if the most important field of activity of human beings is emasculated from the very beginning by the activity of the ego. with organized religion there doesn't seem to be too much love we are guided by a set of rules now which is nothing to do with human kindness to each other you could say that you know religion for many years was a way of organizing government economics and communities i think that's the problem how we how people how religion is used as a person progresses in their um, spiritual life, then religion no longer is meaningful to them yeah. because it becomes a much more personal, internal connection between the soul and God. And so it's an inner journey rather than the external journey that religion offers. So I don't know that religion is the problem, but people use religion. This is our building. This is our ritual, this is our flag, this is our costume, this is our holiday. And you guys, you've got the wrong building, the wrong flag, and the wrong costume, and the wrong holidays. And you guys, you know, it's, it's this my way or the highway kind of approach to spirituality. The problem of religions is organized fear. But it also has produced greatness. Well, so what's the explanation of that? It's the shadow of greatness is terror. So you, you have to work with both. You don't throw out the whole, everything, of all religious traditions just because it's produced bad stuff. That's like saying ban all chainsaws because when they, when you, you know, they're fucking dangerous tools. So you accept the shadow. If you accept the shadow, you can work with it. If you don't, you can't. But traditions don't like accepting their own shadow.
Ah, okay. So I'm Rafael from Mexico. Um, and this, the accident, where was the accident? Actually here, right where we're standing. One way, because single yeah, road. There was, there was no, it's one road, road. Ah. very small road. This is new These are new roads. Oh, yeah. It's wide, uh, it's a very road. small road. So this That's is nice. where the road was. This is where the accident was. So he's the son of the person that discovered Baba and helped Baba out of the car. Ask him if he saw Mayor Baba. Ah, yeah, he has seen him. Did he see Baba's eyes? Did he look into Mayor Baba's eyes? The accident happened directly across the road here. The car just left the road, crashing into a pillar over the other side of the road. In the car, there was Pendu, Vishnu, and Dr. Nilu. Vishnu writes the following. The whole thing happened in the flash of an eye. When I came to, I found I was the only one in the back of the car. I stepped out and went to the front to see how Baba was. I saw Baba bleeding, but never in my life have I seen such utter radiance and luster as, when, as was on Baba's face. The radiance, he says, was blinding. I could see nothing else. Not the car, nor the surroundings, only Baba's face in glorious triumph. I think one of the most astonishing things that ever happened to me in my life was my first meeting with my own spiritual master. He had not come to establish any sort of new religion, and his actually his only real interest was to make an effort to revitalize the, some of the world's existing great religions and to make their truths more clear accessible to sincere seekers after truth and to gather them together like beads on one string. Everyone who heard that message uh, knew that it would certainly be a tremendous challenge. This attic, that window, is where Baba stayed when he began to realize. Yes, just that top window. Uh, any so, name, particular name given to the philosophy of Baba? No. No. Baba's no philosophy name. is all inclusive, I would say. Okay. It's a, uh, you cannot, I mean, just uh, fix in a particular thinking or particular thought or particular school of thought. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's a very wide and very uh, all inclusive. Do you yeah. have any that, audio of Baba? He, no, Baba was keeping silence. Baba had kept okay. silence for 43 years, right from 1925, 10th July 1925, till he dropped his body okay. on 31st January 1969. Yeah, at Meherabad. Huh. Till that time he was observing silence. Okay. And the silence was so very perfect that nobody has, after that, nobody has heard his voice. Many things have been said about his silence. When he announced this silence, somebody asked him, Baba, if you observe silence, who will teach us? <clears throat> and Baba answered, I have not come to teach, but to awaken. Meher Baba has said about himself that he got in human form, that he is the, the advent of God taken a human form, the avatar. The first known avatar advent was Zoroaster. After that came Ram. After Ram would be Krishna. After Krishna, 
would be Buddha. After Buddha would be Jesus, Muhammad, Mayor Baba. 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 I don't know about anybody else, but the reason why I go to Baba's house is it, I get a very beautiful feeling there. It serves as a remembrance, as you would remember someone who you love. Quand je suis rentré dans cette pièce, j'ai eu vraiment très mal à la tête. C'était des énergies contradictoires, tu sais. C'était positif et négatif, comme ça, ça faisait bam, bam, bam. Et ça, c'est vrai que je l'ai ressenti. Like any experience that we may have with a close friend or a family member, it's hard to describe how you feel. So the only way I can describe my relationship to Baba is that I love him. The heart of each religion is the same, it's this, this intense love for God and that we are trying to get back to that. If we could let go of all the ritual, the symbolisms and all the rules and regulation that each one has and say this is mine and this is not yours and therefore I'm right and you're wrong, if you could get rid of all it and then get back to the essence so that you can be connected with God from your heart. I don't think I don't think there's a guy in the clouds who's judging us. I think that uh, inside the the root of our consciousness is God, and it's the same same thing at the center of everything. Concepts, but surely, like God is, if God exists, it's everything. In which case, He is if He's not, because everything's God. He's as much God as you are. I am. I kind of feel the same way. I just, it's so hard to. I mean, if I see God as you know, the universe and everything in it, then how can yeah? Then how can can Baba be more God. more God than everything else? Yeah. It like, seems good. Contradiction. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's no uh, contradiction with what you said. Yeah. So yeah, he's he said everyone is God, but there's no doubt in my mind that I don't experience myself. I do not experience myself as God. I know that. And there's also no doubt in my mind that I love and trust this person called Mary Baba. And I trust him, so if he says he's Santa Claus, that's good by me. <laughs> Baba said he came to do it with ritual and ceremonies. I personally was allergic to the Catholic Church because when my parents dragged me to church, or, you know, I had the catechism in this, it was like going to hell. It was like, get me out of here, this is terrible. You know, guy on the cross, and people, nah, man, 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 people cry. But now, I'm doing the same thing. But I love it, you know? <laughs> so is it a ritual or a ceremony? I couldn't give a shit. I, I love it, I, so I do it. I mean, I understand if you personally want to be reminded often of this yeah. person whom you love, and, but at the same time, it separates. I mean, it may not be what you intended, but it creates a group of people who know something to the exclusion of those who don't know. I hope I don't give that impression to somebody that I know, that I think I know something they don't, that, you know, I'm something special. There's nothing. You know, I, I can be an idiot that happens to believe Baba is the avatar. I'm still an idiot. <laughs> that doesn't make me, you know, not an idiot. <laughs> yeah. So you can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. What are you is the question. What you do with those around you. It's 
certain key problems in life which don't seem to have given much uh, even over decades of sincere effort. On a trip like this, somewhere or another, they come up, they express themselves, and they move. I've noticed the most in this pilgrimage is movement. The movement is it's just incredible. Now you've got movement on the physical, you've got movement on the emotional, you've got movement on the intellect, and probably on the spiritual. générations, on n'avait pas les mêmes questions, on n'était pas ici pour euh, au départ les mêmes choses et puis petit à petit euh, ça fait comme une famille, une grande famille. personnes dans une grotte en train de faire une prière, je peux te dire que c'était très très dur. Les grottes m'ont fait ressentir quelque chose que j'avais oublié. Tu vois, c'est quelque chose de... constant change. This is what real life is about. If it were just the same old thing, it would be, in other words, just repetition of the same old habit patterns, which is binding. And that is why daily life has to bring up the elements gradually to wear it out and destroy it. And let's say one be really, truly free. You could go into that temple sweaty and dusty and having just been shouting at beggars and people trying to sell you things, look up and bam, you get it. Or you could prepare yourself for six months and fast and wear the right clothes and go there at dawn and not get it. It's to do with 
being at the place from which that truth came. And there is nothing that can prevent truth from arising. There are no conditions that can prevent truth from arising. That's the impersonal insight. The Buddha cave was just so serene. And the way the ceiling is done, it's like the rib cage. I feel like I'm inside the Buddha's body in there. If I feel myself outside, it's more um, feeling nervous, sometimes even frightened, um, and then sort of gradually moving in, it's just quiet, it's just silent, and probably getting rid of a few more impressions gives this feeling of more peace within, even though I can hop out and get agitated and, you know, then I can go back into the silence. The early Buddhism was quite ascetic. The Buddha himself, had, although he was a prince, gave up everything. About the time of Christ, a new form of Buddhism arose, which is called the Mahayana, which means the great vehicle or the great way. The Mahayana broadened things out a lot. And, and what they did, well, they were just saying, you are unlimited, you know, you don't have to set things up. Um, you don't have to have preparations in order that liberation can occur. You know, it's actually pouring through you at all times, and it's just a matter of not aligning yourself with limitation and uh, triviality. There's this dispensation of, of grace and love that anyone can access just through their own longing to have that relationship with God. The whole of life is just a series of hits like this, boom, 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 boom. And the spiritual traditions are just a way of organizing that to make it manageable. You take all the overpowering experiences of your life, it's like very fast driving. It's like orgasm. It's like going round a corner in a landscape and being blown away by what you see. You know, it's like seeing your child in the cot. You're overcome, and there can be nothing greater. And it's true of all these things, there can be nothing greater. There is only this, is what you say. It's the most powerful thing that there is. And that is what the spiritual life is. And that's what all great teachers are saying. This is, oh, it's here, it's for you. You can have it by right, just because you exist. C'est la première fois que je viens en Inde et euh, c'est un trip très particulier, pas spécialement mystique ou euh, tu vois, je, 
j'ai pas vu des trucs, tu vois, des ombres ou des, des crocodiles qui volent, tu vois, j'ai pas, j'ai pas eu ce genre de trip. Mais j'ai ressenti l'énergie que, qui se dégageait d'ici. Donc je me suis dit, euh, ah, il y a peut-être quelque chose. Things will be different in the world, I don't know. For me, my world. For a few weeks anyway, while the, the high lasts and then it wears off. And... Try to hold on to a, to a kernel of it. I mean, my journal is just like three sentences here, and then two weeks later, there's three sentences. <laughs> you know, there's, there's no, no, it's, in, it's all invisible ink. Personally, I feel like my molecules have been rearranged. Yeah. So now I have to go home and see what that means in my daily life. And then what I, I hope is that they don't get rearranged back. powerful experience I ever had in my life was when I was in the kitchen cutting up vegetables to make a tossed salad with a friend and suddenly I knew we were one and the funny thing was I was one with the refrigerator and, and the heating plate on the stove also. We were all one and that to me was a real experience of oneness. I don't love God. I love human beings, and that seems like a natural expression, but let's say the oneness of Godhood is something even beyond uh, love, veneration, anything of that sort. It just is being.